welcome back to another Healthy Dog Eats. I'm Kim Pichotti. And Dr. Cos. We're here. And today's going to be a fun day. I kind of got to thinking about the kids and the kids being a part of this with the dogs. I thought it would be really kind of fun and awesome because it's summertime. And I know I remember myself, I used to get so excited when the kids would get out of school. But then it kind of hits the middle or end of June and you're like, okay, now what do I do with them? Waiting for 4th of July, vacations, all that kind of stuff, then school shopping. But it's kind of now is a little bit of a lull time. So I thought, what more fun than to have an ice cream, pizza and ice cream party with your dog. Um, and the kids can help. So we can make it like a little party. You could, I mean, I would have loved to have my little granddaughter here and help me do this, but she's only two, so I don't think we would have had very, very much good luck with that, huh, Cos? But I've got Cosmos. He's going to help me. He's going to supervise the cheese part. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, once again, we're doing it cancer fighting. We're doing it cancer fighting for the dogs and cancer fighting for us, which is really, really good. So we can make pizza healthy. We can make ice cream healthy and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So all the rav has been okay the cauliflower crust which that's what we're going to do that's how we're going to make our crust healthy for us. Cauliflower is super anti-inflammatory which we know inflammation is what causes cancer in dogs so this is a great thing for them to be able to have. Also I know Cosmos is eyeing up the cheese here, which we're going to talk about in a minute. We're going to talk. We're just going to kind of go with the flow here, okay? We're going to try to do this a little faster. Last week's episode was a little bit longer, and I want to make sure that we don't bore everybody, right? All right, I got dog hair on my cause. Okay, nonetheless, you don't eat the cheese. Um, with our cauliflower crust, I found a ton of different recipes online, and some of them, they were like, boil it, squeeze out the water, do this, and I'm like, okay, well, the whole main thing is we don't want to have moisture in it. So I'm like, well, why would you want to add water and then squeeze it all back out? So I kind of tried a little couple different ways, a couple different things here, and what I found is, number one, we're going to use the rice flour, the rice cauliflower. Um, the bags have exactly what we need, which is four cups in there, and that's what, exactly what we need for the recipe. Um, even though it says 12 ounces, and we'll talk about that a little bit, uh, it's exactly four cups. So we used the bag. I ended up doing um, the whole cauliflowers in the food processor. It's fine to do it that way. It does get a little bit finer. I think there's a little bit more moisture content when you actually do it fresh that way. And what we want to do is we want to make sure we pull out as much moisture as possible. Because we're trying, we can't really make a crispy, crispy crust, which is wonderful. Um, but we, have, we can make a crust that will stand up, will hold. The kids won't realize they're really eating too many vegetables. Or maybe they'll even think it's kind of cool how we turned this vegetable into pizza. So what you do, first of all, was I turned on my electro skillet and I did this a little bit ago to get so we can kind of speed things up here. I just put all the rice cauliflower in here and I turned it on. I didn't put any oil, didn't put anything. What I did was I drew out the steam and kind of got, drew out the moisture, basically, basically created steam and drew out the moisture in the cauliflower. You can do this in the oven. Um, you can do it in, it's easier to kind of do it here because you're a little bit easier to watch so it doesn't burn because you do can't, you can't really leave it. You have to kind of stand here and kind of stir around and so forth. Then you do need to let it cool slightly. So we can kind of do that. And what I also wanted to show you was how much it actually does cook down. Now this is, as we said, was four cups when we were measured it. So we're going to put it, this is a liquid measure, by the way. It's not a, a dry measure, but we're going to put it and we're going to use it just so I can show you the, wherever the four cup mark is, my eyes are on here. Four cup mark is right at the top there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of undo this a little bit. And see if I can just dump this without spilling it all over the place. Here's a thought. Dump it over the bowl, Kim, and put this in here. I'm sorry. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this all in here. And the only reason I'm showing this is because I want to show you how much this kind of cooked down with all the steam. What started out to be four cups, we may be lucky if it's even going to be two cups. So, and what you want to make sure with all of this is that you are accurate in your measurements with what you're doing. Because what happens is, especially when you're doing these kinds of items, every head of cauliflower, look at that, it's probably just about two cups. So there was literally two cups of moisture in that. And we'll put that down into our bowl. Right. Next ingredients, a lot of people used Parmesan cheese. Some people use mozzarella cheese in the base of this. And what I found with that as well is with dogs, a lot of them are lactose intolerant. So we wanted to kind of watch where we went with that. I went with the Pecorino Romano cheese. 
Uh, this is a sheep's cheese, so the dogs cannot be, or basically have the lactose intolerance to it. Another thing, some dogs don't. So you say, okay, well, I'm just going to, my dog's fine with cheese, I know. But with the amount of cheese that we put in the recipe, and then we are going to put some mozzarella cheese on top of it, it would be equivalent to giving your dog like two slices of the regular sliced cheese, you know, the packaged processed stuff or whatever. Because an ounce of cheese equals a quarter of a cup. So we're going to be putting in one cup of grated pecorino, pecorino romano cheese. All right. And the reason, other reason I chose the pecorino cheese is for its cancer-fighting abilities. Uh, there was a study done in Sardini, Italy in 2009. It was actually a six-year study, and they found that the cheese contains conjun... Okay, let me get this right. I'm going to get my notes this time because I'm going to say these words right. I'm going to read this real quickly. I put this down here so I wouldn't forget. I always get this right. It has conjugated linoleic acid, or what they call it, CLA, which is proven into preserving muscle tissues and inhibits tumor growth on the skin of dogs. So that's kind of where we want to make sure um, that we put that in. So basically, this has two benefits. We've got our it's cheap cheese where we're not having to worry about our lactose intolerance and we're getting cancer-fighting properties for our dog and for the kids. So we're gonna put that in. The other thing I put in our recipe, um, some recipes call for almond flour, but almonds, I'm not really crazy about giving the dogs with the nuts and so forth. I don't know enough about it to say, hey, let's try that. So I know that they can have oats. So we just did a little bit of, we got gluten-free oats. I put, popped them in the food processor and ground it up to flour. So we have a quarter of a cup of that. So we're gonna put that in there as well. Then we are going to put in our oregano and maybe half teaspoon. I never really measure this kind of stuff. I kind of just pop it in there. And our basil, because we want to season again as we're going along. And lastly, we're going to put a little bit of garlic powder. Now, garlic was something else that I found a, a little bit of controversy about this week. I've known in the past that garlic, some people say, oh, garlic, don't give your dog garlic. Some people say, do give your dog garlic. I actually found a nutritionist this week that said that garlic is a wonderful flea and tick control for dogs. However, she, her dose that she was recommending was one clove per 30 pounds of dog per day. That just seemed like a lot to me. So I'm not really sure. I know it's safe for them. Some dogs have upset. And remember, once again, we want you to make sure that you're doing this in conjunction with a healthy dog. Like if your dog's got kidney issues or your dog's got, you know, older and it's got different, different health issues, please always make sure that you check with your vet as far as before making any of the recipes to make sure that none of them will have any adverse effects. Uh, we know that they're safe for us, we know they're safe for, the for our healthy dogs, but we just don't want to make sure that anybody's, you know, giving something, thinking, oh, it cures arthritis and, or mistaking anything. So we want to make sure on that. Um, lastly, I will put this down here. Lastly, we are going to add in one egg. Now, I tried this a couple of different ways as well. Um, I tried it with a couple egg whites, I tried it with the egg yolk, and I think it's fine to add the egg fat in there. I think that that makes a difference. So with our cauliflower crust, we're just gonna mix this all up. You're gonna have to kind of get your hands into it because it's gotta be able to kind of be broken out. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make actually little personalized pizzas. Instead of making one giant crust, we're gonna make personalized ones so the kids can put on their other toppings. Uh, they can put on their, you know, the toppings for the dogs. Because, you know, we may wanna limit some of those uh, if your dog has certain sensitivities to any ones. The toppings that we picked to put on these pizzas today are actually um, tomato, spinach, and shiitake mushrooms because all of them have cancer-fighting properties for our dog and research that has shown for that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give this kind of a, a good mix up. And let us get this mixed up and separate it off, and we'll be right back as we put them and get them ready for the oven. What we did was we took our pizza, our cauliflower, and we divided it out into four little sections. Now, we use a pizza screen because I really like how the fact that the airflow kind of goes up. The only thing that I still don't, I'm not crazy about this recipe is the fact that you're using parchment paper, which you need to do so that they don't stick. Um, I tried spraying them and they still kind of stuck. 
um, and I wasn't real happy with it. So, but the parchment paper creates moisture. So once we bring them out, we're gonna let them cool for a little bit before we take them off, and then hopefully we'll be able to lose some moisture. But when I think we put them back in to broil after we put our toppings on, uh, we'll be able to crisp up those bottoms just a little bit better from that standpoint. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this in an oven for at 425, about 12 to 15 minutes. While that's going, we'll start making our ice cream. So let's pop this in right now and we'll let it go and we kind of want to just watch it we're going to watch for it to get a little bit brown but like I said we want to make sure that we cool because we want to get those that moisture out of it it's kind of like when you take cookies out and you've got to let them crisp up a little bit are you ready we're going to make ice cream now but you're not going to like it because it's watermelon next thing our ice cream two ingredients absolutely amazing you're going to love it the kids are going to love it so what we have done is we have taken and we have taken watermelon and we cut it up into some cubes and we've taken some bananas and we've cut that up and sliced that up rather as well. Now what I wanted to tell you on this is once again, just like our crust, it's very important that measurements right because we're going for a specific type of consistency on this. Um, this, is, this is it. These are the only two ingredients which the watermelon is great, antioxidants, de helps with the, the mo uh, not moisture, liquid, all that, the, the de uh, dehydration, there's the word that I'm looking for. So that's really great for the dogs. Bananas, great for the potassium as well. Same thing for the kids. Great summer fruits. I tried it with a bunch of other different fruits. I wasn't happy, as happy with it because there's much more water content, obviously, into the watermelon. So that's what makes this one a little bit better. So all we're gonna do is, it's 12 ounces of watermelon. So we're gonna pop that in. What I did was actually just do a little bit at a time. Like kind of like half. Because we don't, if you don't have a real, real powerful food processor or blender, and you can do it either in like even those ninja or smoothie blenders or whichever. We're gonna pop that in. We're gonna get that going. And then we're just gonna pulse it for a free couple times. And we are going to get this all mixed up, add in the rest, and then we'll be right back to show you our, our ice cream ready to get that. And we'll put that in the freezer, and that'll be ready for us. So hold on. We'll be right back. Look how awesome that looks, guys. It looks like ice cream. Well, it is ice cream, kind of, huh? Just put out the cream. All right, let's put this lid. Cosmos, we're going to set this lid over here for right now. And we're going to get this all out here. Look at this. This is so cool. I just like want to lick it, but I won't do that. I'm on TV, right? <laughs> on video. All right, so we're just going to take this all out of here. Look how smooth. It's almost like gelato. Cosmos, we're going to have gelato. This looks like it's making about two cups. Um, so you've got a good half cup serving, which is usually traditional ice cream serving for everybody. One for the dog, two kids, and you, right? If you have more, just obviously adjust your recipes. So what we're going to do is kind of just spread that out. I did put it in some parchment paper just so it doesn't stick when we get it out. We'll put this over here. We'll pop this in the freezer and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we are back and we're going to get ready to get all of our ingredients together for our toppings of our pizza. And I figured it'd be easier this time to just kind of do it all in a skillet um, as opposed because I'm going to be doing this very low and this works wonders too. It's basically olive oil in a can. Kind of just toss it lightly a little bit over all of this. And the three ingredients that we chose were actually four because Cosmos is going to get anchovies uh, for our pizza was <clears throat> San Marziano tomatoes because our tomatoes with our lycopene um, and basically the arthritis and all the anti-inflammatory items that they have here. We have spinach and spinach helps for circulation, uh, muscle growth, and all that kinds of things. And then our medicinal mushrooms. Mushrooms, any edible mushroom. Shiitake um, is a great mushroom to give your dog because it's got all the kinds of anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties and so forth in there. So our, our main issue is that we get all this stuff great for our dogs. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda put these down. And I'm gonna turn this, I actually had it at 275, but I wanna turn it down just a little bit more. We're gonna kinda just put them in the different areas. And remember, the low and slow as far as cooking our items is best um, because this way it keeps all the nutrients for our dogs. So we're just going to kind of do that. Cooked tomatoes actually are better for your dog and better for people as well. You get more nutrient value out of cooked tomatoes than you do fresh or raw. 
So we're just going to saute all this up a little bit lightly. We're still waiting for our pizzas. They're, if you can see, they're browning up nicely, our pizza crust, so they're almost ready to come out. We'll let them cool. We're going to kind of toss all this through. Our ice cream is in there, keeping it going, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we have our pizza and we're ready to start building. So as you see, we took them out. We let them cool a little bit. I put them on a, just a plain pan to kind of let the air flow go through. So now I want to remove that parchment paper. They're still kind of warm to my touch, uh, like we were talking about earlier, because the parchment paper will add moisture. So we're just gonna add this through. And this is my thing. I mean, I like crispy crust. It's really, you can keep leave the parchment paper on there. It's no big deal. I'm sure that the dogs aren't gonna mind. <laughs> a little bit softer crust, or the kids for that matter. So we're gonna do that. Uh, there's always controversy you hear in people when baking pizza, especially when you go to Italy. Uh, they say you put the cheese on first, you put the toppings on last. In literally some places, in some regions, they don't even put sauce on. They just do the tomatoes. And that's actually what we're gonna do today. So what I'm going to do is I'm first gonna put on a little bit of the mozzarella cheese. Now, remember we talked about the dogs being lactose intolerant. If your dog is, use the pecorino cheese um, to just grate that and put that on the cheese on there first for them. If not, it's not going to hurt them. You know, if they can tolerate a piece of cheese, just use the mozzarella. Make sure you get the skim because once again, we're going for that moisture content and we want it to be a little bit healthier. So what we're going to do, and it can be as little or as lot, you know, roughly maybe a quarter of a cup per. So we're going to add a little bit of cheese to all of our pizzas. It's not even a quarter of a cup per, but just whatever you want. And let the kids have fun with this. Let them put their own toppings, build the toppings. Just make sure that you watch the top, the one that they do for the dogs. So this way then it's, the dog doesn't get too much. And then all we're gonna do is actually use this spoon. I'm gonna take a little bit of tomatoes, put it on there. Look at this. And this is so healthy and so good. And an awesome pizza party. Cosmos, we're gonna put a little anchovies on his pizza when his comes out. Uh, so this way he can have uh, a little bit extra of the omegas because that's good for them as well. So I wilted down the spinach as well. You can kind of put that on there, however you wanna kind of put them on. And we cook these low and slow because remember, we have to make sure that we break, as I said, break up the cell membranes on our items. And we're just gonna put them back in at a broil. So we're not actually gonna be cooking them. All we're gonna do with basically is kind of just kind of, this kind of is all together, but that's all right. Put them back in uh, just to melt the cheese. And get some of those shiitake mushrooms on there. We have pizza. Pizza party, Cosmos. Are you excited? I know you are because it has cheese, right bud? Get a little mushrooms on that. All right, and if you want, if you you're like your cheese on top, go ahead and throw just another touch, just on top, just a little bit. Cheese on top, cheese on the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this back in the oven and we're gonna put it on broil. And while we let that go real quickly, we're gonna go get ready and we're gonna scoop out our ice cream. So we're gonna have everything all ready for you. Okay guys, look how beautiful the pizza looks. We have four amazing servings. And like you said, the kids can have a blast with this because they're probably like, oh my gosh, they did it. It's fun for you, it's a whole family thing. And that's really what we all, why we all got pets to begin with because we wanted another member of the family. So this is important to kind of keep it together and keep them involved with it as much as we can. So now we're going to plate up our dessert. Look at our watermelon ice cream here. And it's a little bit soft, which is the way I like it. So it all depends how you want to kind of scoop it in, how you want to do it. I know Cosmos, you hear it. But this is just amazing to me that the fact that this is only bananas and watermelon. And like I said, I did try the other fruits, but I just wasn't happy with them. This kind of, I guess maybe I was partial to this because I remember being in eighth grade when Friendly's used to have this watermelon cooler and I would get on my bike every summer and I would go down there for this watermelon cooler and it was just amazing. Let's do that just a little bit more. All right, we'll set that aside and then I think we've, I found this. I don't know if it's good, but you know the kids always like to do the ready whip. I don't know if you were when you were a kid when you'd like squirt your brother or squirt yourself in the mouth or you'd sit there and eat it. I've actually done that with the dogs. I shouldn't say that, but we have done that at times. But the kids have fun with this. But this was for co well, made with coconut milk, so I thought we would try that. That's good. But my preference would be obviously to make your own homemade whipped cream. So we'll put a little bit of whipped cream on them. 
And the kids, like I said, they just have fun with this. And then we're gonna top it off with a few little blackberries on top. So my aim's not very good here, but that's all right too. It all is going to the same place, right? And then, let's do that one a little bit nicer. And then, I love coconut, so it's up to you if you wanna throw even a little bit more coconut on there. But look at this, guys. This is our pizza and ice cream party with the dogs, for the dogs, and we didn't forget about all the cancer-fighting benefits of this. So we are gonna go ahead and let Cosmos have his lunch and try the pizza and see if they'll eat the watermelon ice cream this time. But you can get the recipes at empoweredpups.com and you also can sign up for our healthy newsletter and we'll see you guys next week. Not sure what we're making yet, but we'll figure it out. But don't worry, it's always gonna be cancer fighting. Talk to you soon.